Hello everyone, welcome to Greystone Farm. We're doing this uh, first episode of this Let's Play as a live stream. I'm not sure because it's Christmas Eve and very, very short notice. I'm not sure if anyone's going to jump on here or not. Uh, but I'm just having a quick look around right now at various options for our starter farm. Uh, there's a lot of good spots where you can create a farm on this map. <clears throat> this happens to be one of them. As I understand that these uh, big machines here are tobacco dryers, which uh, tobacco is not actually a crop currently on the map, but uh, the author said he would like to add it in the future. Not something I would be interested in growing, though. I am very anti-smoking, so uh, anything of that nature I would just skip over. So that's this farm here, which also comes with this farm here, and they share this uh, fuel point. Um, in fact, I can show you that on the map. So there you go. There's a farmhouse here and a farmhouse here. I don't know which one has a sleep trigger, if either one even does. Um, <clears throat> but uh, at the moment, I've evaluated that. I've also looked at this one up here, which also comes with this little piece of land. Um, of course, there's the default starting farm down here in the corner. There's this farm right next door. Uh, and I have not checked out this one, but it includes all the what I call verges of the map. That includes a lot of little pieces. Uh, and then there's another one up here that I'm going to go check out, and this one right here. So if I hit, well, this one actually looks like a sail point. All I can see on the map is buildings. Um, there is what looks like a farmhouse or something right there as well. So if we flip back to this and I go ahead and visit. Perfect, we're already facing the right way. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from buying this little plot of land and living right here in this house, you know, if we wanted to. But watch out for these very fast-moving cars. Wait, thank you. Oh, how kind. Woo, water. Well, I like this area already. And what I want to see is just on the other side of this. So let's go for a quick swim. I want to see what's back here in the woods. That looks like a building. I have no idea what it is, but we shall find out together. So there does seem to be possibly a little bit of a track right here. I don't know. I am not seeing a building though to match that spot on the map. But there's another little indentation that could be a farmhouse right through these woods. Oof, very overgrown. Very thick, wooded area. Which, in a way, is good, because if I decide to do some forestry, I can thin this out without completely stripping it bare. Now check this out. This is nice. This is a little plot of land where we could plunk our own house if we wanted to and go from there but not today today we are looking for existing houses well there's one right there and boy lots of traffic with a knockdown mailbox start across here yeah very overgrown we got a knockdown mailbox hmm let's see if it is separately purchasable or if it's part of the verge it's part of the verge then again so is this one up here in the corner uh, I am trying to stay away from the map edges um, just because the edges of this map are not well done in my opinion 
the the background land texture is way below the ground level um, so it you look like you're on a floating square island of land when you get right up to the map edge Ooh, look deer and so nothing up here it doesn't look like there is the house on the south side of the road but you can see what i mean you're just looking over the edge or falling over the edge as the case may be well that's nice hey we get a good view of where all the houses are so yeah i would probably want to avoid that um just until that gets fixed at least so, oh boy, oh boy, we're way down here now. But you see what I mean? Ooh, hey, it fixed itself. That's cool. That That's cool. Um, wouldn't want to try that in a tractor. So, yeah, those are some options. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be right at the map edge. There's some issues with it, in my opinion that I just don't want to have to watch in my gameplay. So, let's see here. There is this fuel point back here. I wonder what's back there. Um, help, help. That's a bad teleport. That's definitely a bad teleportation point. So let's go, whoops, uh, map overview. Um, there we go. I can visit the water trough. So obviously, uh, that's a horse farm there. <laughs> Not really interested in doing horses on FS22 just yet. But, let's see. Okay, so that's another grain dryer setup. Boy, there we go. And yeah, that put us literally right inside the fuel tank. Is there anything up this track here? Headed off into the woods. Oh, old wrecked car. And this... What looks like a track heading off into the woods is actually nothing. Apparently it just heads to the woods. So which means whatever this is on the satellite map that he, he based it on, it's not actually here. It's just a little clearing. Okay. nice little grass field here so I think that I'm actually going to go with my first instinct of down here although I didn't look at this if there's even anything over there we'll do that right now So there's, on the land that we would own, there's this home, and then there's the larger one over, well, let's see if we can see it from back here. Right there. That one right, oh, whoa, that one right there. And then what's on the other side of the road here? Okay, multiple houses. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be over here. So. I don't know. I personally think. Sure, Ryan. Go ahead, tell me a joke. I personally think that this one and this barn is where we will start. And even though we will own the larger set of buildings over yonder there, we will ignore them uh, and just 
run with this as our farm. So I am going to go ahead and purchase this piece of land. Whoops. Farmland. Buy it. So many little pieces of land there. <laughs> All right, so we have purchased that. Just out of curiosity, does it come with a sleep trigger of any kind? Nope. I'm guessing if there is a sleep trigger, it's going to be over here at the big house. But we're not even going to bother to go over there and find out because we're not going to use it. Um... So let's get us ourselves some starter equipment and go from there. Sorry, just had a whole bunch of emails come in all at once on my phone. And most of them were junk, so we're going to flip the phone over to put it into quiet mode. And let's. Go ahead and, I had never even looked into those. There we go. <laughs> That's great. It can be a tractor, it can be a snow plow. Ryan didn't tell me a joke. I must have taken too long to respond. I'm sorry, Ryan. So we're gonna have our nice expendable Chevy here. Yeah, we don't need it lifted in the rear end. Grill option. I think I like options four and five, and of those two, I like the classic bow tie better. Uh, attachers. Fixed hitch. Okay. Adjustable hitch, nice. Fixed hitch and gooseneck. Adjustable hitch and gooseneck. No attachments. So we're going to go with fixed and uh, gooseneck. And the reason we're going to do a fixed hitch on the rear end instead of an adjustable is because if we put a plow on this, um, at least in 19, the, the same truck has a problem where uh, if you have the adjustable hitch on and you try to use the plow even if you have the plow selected it raises and lowers the hitch instead so just we, we can test it if and when i get a plow but bumper add-ons yes that must be something in the front i'm not seeing anything okay badges High country, huh? Where? I don't see that either. No badges. Is it on the back end? Nope. Well, I don't know where that badging is at. But sure. Magnum rack. Uh, I mean, it's there already. Yes, we will have that. And it's me, so we got to be some shade of green. I always end up coming back to the John Deere. But in this case, I might go with something different. Woodland green. Eh, kind of. Uh... A glossy deep blue, huh? Actually, I kind of like that design color. And what happens if I put this over to the design color? That's just the bumpers. How about dark steel? Yeah, I like that. Rim color. Uh, where's my onyx? I like onyx for my... There it is. Rim color. Beautiful. Ha, 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 You're funny. Uh, I don't see the second joke because it, the bot considered it inappropriate and yanked it from the chat. 
<laughs> oh, you're in rare form tonight, I take it. Just for giggles, let's see what's on sale to start with. Oh. Well, we're going to start with a little smaller than that, so. Small tractors. Yeah. I'd love to start with this Zeter. Oh, okay, Ryan. Gotcha. Well, I didn't see it before you deleted it, so. Uh-huh. Medium tractors. Uh, there's so many really nice mods in the in the pipeline from people for tractors. I can't wait until they're actually available. We might have to start with our little Zeter here. Um, because I don't really want to start with anything too big. We Let's look at a trailer real quick, though. Uh, Mm hmm. I forgot to add the one I wanted to use. Go figure. That's okay. We don't need the trailer right this minute. Anyway. Um, mowers. I did add a mower that I would like to try out. Nice. 30 horsepower requirement. I think we could run that all right with the Zeter, even though it's only 25 horsepower. As long as we're on level ground, I think it would run it. Maybe not at the full 11 miles an hour, but I'll take it. Let's see what else we can do. Um... want to look straight into mods. I couldn't remember what the icon was. We'll try this. Uh, 10 horsepower requirement seed drill here. That's awesome. Nice 389. All right. Yeah, maybe we'll be that far in the future. Mm-hmm. 70 horsepower. I don't think a 25 horsepower tractor would do very good with this thing. Let me know what you think on that one. Huh. So, yes. We'll go back now. Whoops. That's right. It's not back. Oh, one of these days I'll get used to it, but I'm still playing too much 19. I keep making mistakes. Okay. Let's go ahead and buy ourselves a tractor. And... Man. Well, we've got an old Zeter. Should we also have a newer Zeter that can pull that plow? <laughs> oh, right. I forgot to take the million away. I wanted to lower the money from 1.5 to just... Uh, actually, probably down to 250. Yep, we'll put the weight on. HMG001. Oh, backwards. That's right.
There we go. And we'll make that green. All right. So that'll be that tractor. And I'm going to go and remove some money before I forget. We'll take off 1.2 mil. That leaves us with still a little bit of money that way. I want this mod plow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Probably not going to be able to get very far into this series. Uh, before I end up needing to not do anything further. Because... Um, there's no vintage harvesters, cheap harvesters available yet. Automatic engine start is off. Stop and go braking. Off. Turn that on. And we'll call that good. I'm using manual attach. Yep. Alrighty. So now I gotta learn my way home. I need to make a left onto that main road there. I should probably fold the plow for transport, shouldn't I? Does the plow even support that? No, it does not. So we're going to have to stay way over here on the side of the road. I should, I, yeah, I could have looked at it and known that it didn't. <laughs> it's got a bolted or riveted plate right there in the angle. Holy traffic. We're never going to get out of here. Yeah, let's not hit anybody. Small map back up. Oh! So we're going out of our way not to hit anybody, and instead we get rammed. That wasn't very nice. Well, there's home right there. <laughs> as we hold up the traffic. I don't mind holding up traffic. You know, that one right there would have been a good option as well. Wow. Thank you, traffic. Well, this is why we have super strength.
stupid artificial intelligence drivers anyway. Guessing this plow doesn't have the proper collision detection on it or something of that nature. So we are not the Mossy Pine Ranch. Okay. I'm all right with that. Or are we? I honestly don't know. <laughs> the plow right into here oh gotta lower it first that's right And if we grab our other tractor. Let's, uh... Go ahead and take the... Haybine with us first. go yell at Scooter if this doesn't work because I got this from Scooter's workbench released on his Facebook hmm well this also came from Scooter so let's see what this one does Scooter, what'd you do? Well, that's not good. Is there some configuration option on this that I needed to change? no configuration options beautiful okay well, let's see what happens when we Hey, Goggle Pop, how are you tonight? We are experimenting with some of uh, the mods that Scooter's Workbench released on Facebook today. Well, over the past few days, actually. All 
Alright, so... The problem is definitively with the little Zeter there. Damn you, little Zeter. How dare you be broken. Which means we're selling it. 8,359. Oops. And what was she brand new? 9,500. So. They owe us 1,141 bucks. I'll be having that. So I guess we are starting with this Zeter as our only tractor. Just out of giggles. So, Goggle Pop, did you see uh, what I put on my Discord about uh, doing giveaways on my birthday? And how many ridiculous amount of game keys I have? Sweet. We concede with our pickup truck. Nice. Expendables Modding does such a good job with their vehicles. Cause that to go flying right there, but it definitely went for a bit of a ride. This haybine looks huge behind this tractor. <laughs> We're going for it. Well, that's not good. My uh, side panel just came partially loose. Better tighten that back down. Selected work mode, widespreading. Hmm. Cool. What's the key bind? I don't see a key bind for changing that. Hmm. Oh well. Let's 
so we need to decide what we're going to do as far as land, and I'm thinking we might as well just buy this grass field that we're driving next to right now if we can afford it. And we're probably going to have to lease a baler to get us started because there's no way we're going to be able to afford one on the budget that we have. nice of them to just ram me off the road again. Alright, so it says there's a work mode, but I don't see any way to toggle said work mode. Oh, control V, right there. Jeez, I'm blind. The very last thing. Oh, it's control Y, not V. Swath dropping. <laughs> Chasing some deer around our yard. I mean, I guess so that we can have the money for equipment. We can just start with just our yard. It's a good way to start. It is good. <laughs> I didn't know that you had gone away. <laughs> How are you tonight? Yeah, I was telling uh, the bumpkins that they need to play on this map. I had forgotten that you were also from North Carolina. Uh, that deer just totally got creamed by that car and somehow survived. <laughs> oh, and again! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I understand the family stuff, but my daughter came here, so I didn't have to go anywhere, which was nice. How much of the other side of the road do we own here? And by road, I mean our driveway. Nothing. Yes, despite all your hurricane stuff, <laughs> I managed to somehow forget because uh, you and I just don't talk enough. <laughs> I, I talk to the bumpkins darn near every single day, so it's a little easier to remember with that kind of frequency. Hey, 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 stay out of the road. Ooh.
so I, since I didn't know that you were away from the chat there for a minute, um, I had asked you if you had seen my announcements regarding how many games I have to give away during my birthday stream. I mean, choices in games to give away, not how many I'm actually going to give away. Nope, I want to turn the other direction. I don't remember the exact number, but if you go and look in my Discord's announcements channel, it's over 140. I think it's 148 possibilities. Of which, at least 30 of them are grade A titles. Top tier stuff. That's a lot of choices. <laughs> Now if I can just get enough people to join the stream to be able to do at least 20 of them. Because I'm not going to give away 20 games if uh, only three people join the stream, if you know what I mean. Um, and I think I mentioned this to you already, but there are copies of Hitman and Hitman 2, and the Hitman is the Game of the Year edition. Yeah, I don't know how many of the Discord owners are going to let me uh, promote that hard. It'd be nice if some of them would uh, give me a shout and uh, say, hey, look, this guy's birthday stream is going to be totally awesome. Go check it out. <laughs> I mean, like if Farm Sim Guy and Argzy and Mr. Steely P all told people to go watch my birthday stream uh, and that I was giving away a bunch of game keys... I'd have so many people show up, it would be crazy. Yeah, do that. I mean, what's your computer? More importantly, what's your video card? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I kind of meant if the guys themselves, like, set it on a video to uh, go check out my stream, you know. But that's a big ask, and I'm not going to ask them. It would just be cool if they did. Oh, right, it's a Mac. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. You need a real computer, man. 
<laughs> I have a Mac for work, and I hate it. But at least it's not one of the new M1s. Ugh. With their stupid proprietary CPU again. They're, they're going backwards. It was such a leap forward when they uh, switched to Intel CPUs. Now that they're going back to a proprietary CPU, <clears throat> CPU, it's just... Oops, I bumped the shifter. It's just ridiculous. Hey, I only paid seventeen fifty for mine. And it's great. And it's not even what I was originally gonna get. The only reason I went for this one and paid more is because they were out of stock on the other one that I was originally gonna get. But you'll have to upgrade your PlayStation twice in the time that you would use that computer. So you're halfway there already. I should say at least twice. And there are way more games for computer, so you have more options. It's like owning a PS5 and an Xbox. Yeah, you should have sold it with the argument that I just said. It's like owning a PS5 and an Xbox with the number of games that you can play. And uh, if you were to buy the most recent Xbox, the most recent PlayStation, and then have to upgrade them each once to the newer versions after that, you've bought the computer. And you get the same use time frame. It's all in how you word it. <laughs> you just gotta sell it. Cool. Uh, come visit me. I'll take care of that problem for you. <laughs> I'll do what my brother did to me and spill a can of Coke on it for you. Although with my brother, it was actually much worse. He ruined several un <laughs> extremely rare video games that I had back in the day. Um, he ruined one of my two, thankfully I had two, Atari 2500s with Coca-Cola. This was all out of the same two-liter bottle. He ruined um, my copy of both my copy of Secret of Mana and uh, Secret of Evermore. Um, he ruined my copy of Earthbound. Let's see what else did he ruin with the Coca-Cola spillage? There was something else, but I don't remember anymore. What? <laughs> okay. Wow. That's a dorm room story if I ever heard one. <laughs> I ruined my computer because I peed on it in my sleep. Wow.
That's that's a story right there. Not one I'd really want to tell, though. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of uh, of a joke about George going to the doctor. <clears throat> Old man named George goes into the doctor. And the uh, doctor says, all right, George, how have you been? George says, I've been really good, doc, thanks. And the doctor says, and how's Helen, your wife? And... Uh, George says, oh, she's really good. And then the doctor asks, okay, all right, all right. How are you emotionally and spiritually? Do you have a good relationship with God? And George says, yeah, God and I are great. Every night when I get up to go to the bathroom, poof, on goes the light. And when I'm done, poof, off goes the light. Now, the doctor thought that this was just ridiculous and amazing. So, later on, he spoke to Helen about it. He said, Helen, is it true that when George goes to the bathroom, God turns the light on for him? Poof! And when he's all done, he turns the light off? Poof! Helen says, Blast it! He's peeing in the fridge again! And yes, I had to I had to edit that one up. <laughs> That's not how she says it in the original version. <laughs> Oh, Alexander, come on. Your head's right in the way. I'm trying to steer. And this thing's not very easy to steer in the first place. Being offset like it is. And I have a very narrow stall to put it in. Whoop, whoop. Doesn't help any when I turn the wheels the wrong way either. Beautiful. So now we need a baler and a wrapper and something to pick them up with. Crap. And a dog needs to go out. <laughs> I shall return. Hello, Sir Moose. Let's go.
as my microphone is probably giving away I'm back <laughs> pretty sure it picked up the uh, spike in sound when I opened the coke so Baylor's what do we have for options I mean That looks pretty doggone small. What is the smallest, cheapest baler that we can get that has an integrated wrapper? I'm thinking it's this guy right here. And I would be correct, it looks like. So, boy. Do we go for it? <clears throat> Smallest, cheapest, 78,500. Does not leave us a whole lot of money to get something to pick them up with and haul them with. Oh. How much is a separate bale wrapper? Wow. Wow. Pricey. Can this Zeter? It cannot get a front loader set up. Should have gone for the Massey. Crap. I didn't do it because I use the Massey all the time. Alright, so let's trade our Zeter in for a Massey. I need to get 42,500 out of the Zeter. Yep. Oops, wrong icon. Thirty-three, four, go. So, 9036 and 3. And then we will purchase the Massey instead. It's like, how can you have a tractor of this size? Oh, I see the next size up on the Zeter has the front end loader and, pardon me, and front three point. But, uh, this is cheaper, but no front three point. Ooh. So let's stick with the Zeter then. Hmm. I think we'll go that route. Michelin tires, of course, wides. Oh, no wides with weights, huh? Engine setup. We can get some horsepower out of this baby, but we're going to just stick with the stock engine. Plate is fine. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> At least till the mods start coming, right? Best tractors in the base game.
I mean, just the way you can actually see through that, and it looks realistic seeing through the grill grating there, that's impressive. Now, the, the question of the day is, can we still afford the baler? No! We're going to have to take a tiny, tiny loan. Tiny, tiny, tiny loan. Oh, maybe not so tiny because i got to get front loader equipment too. So let's take a $20,000 loan. That ought to be pretty easy to pay back quickly at that. So, Baylor, Unirap with Michelin tires, green foil, no plate, buy that, go back. Yep, yep, I saw that uh, um, message as well. They are being very particular. Yeah, um, there are a lot of people that are uh, just trying to throw whatever garbage out there they can quickly to be the first person to get such and such onto the mod hub. And I think that's a really poor way to handle mods. Um, but being first doesn't mean anything if you're also the worst. Front loader tools. <laughs> Guess we go with this guy. Nice and cheap. Yeah, um, I'm with you on that. Just because there's a something else like it out doesn't mean that that something else is better. Um, I mean, come on, how many uh, three-meter plows did we need in FS-19 that were all very, very similar for the most part? This baler is absolutely monstrous for this tractor. Happens way too often, I'm afraid. 
Giants has got some really weird ideas on how to do things. And they don't take criticism of those ideas very well at all. Because uh, there was some uh, forum posts regarding that fent. And they ended up getting deleted. That's how poorly Giants took it. And they weren't rude or anything. They were just pointing out that the one that they rejected was better than the ones that already existed. By a, a pretty good margin. And a lot of people chimed in on it. And then it was gone. In less than a day. And that, that's just bullying tactics, in my opinion. What the... What is with you people ramming me? Yeah, that sucks. I wasn't aware of that. I don't think he's got the uh, traffic set up properly on this for collision detection. How dare I drive in the road? Hey, it's legal. Just stick my orange marker on the back end, triangle or flag, and roll down the road. Perfectly legal. At least it is here in Michigan. I assume it is in uh, North Carolina as well. I want it start. The baler will not start. What's going on? Did I not hook up the... I didn't. That's what's going on. I thought I got them both. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, this little Zeter is struggling. <laughs> so I both like and dislike Elm Creek um, I like it because it's it's a decent map what I don't like is the way they advertised it 
they showed us all the best parts making us think that it was going to be even better than it actually is that was my problem with it they oversold it Holy traffic. <laughs> or use the buildings. I'd say being able to use the buildings was pretty big. <laughs> hear it out of you Alexander no I do not puppy dog I took you outside well to me that's just like giants not stepping up and having enterable farmhouses and people were saying, um, well, that's up to the mod makers. The Giants wanted to leave them room to make even better things. They still could have done interiors on the farmhouses and just had them be very, very basic. And that would have been way better than the chintzy window backings that we have instead. That look terrible when you get up close. <laughs> well, you know, he got the name because he was a pretentious brat. That's why it's not just Alexander, it is Sir Alexander. Sir Alexander Malcolm. That, that's his official name. But then we can add about 30 nicknames in there. Moose, Sir Wigglebutt, Blockhead, Knucklehead, Roadblock, Door, because he makes a better door than a window. Um, oh, I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head at the moment, because my girlfriend's got a few that she likes to call him, too. <laughs> wow <laughs> that's a mouthful of a name <laughs> but yes Alexander most definitely earned his name and that was 
the first day we had him when he was like six weeks, seven weeks old. On the ride home, he earned that pretentious name. Along with his first nickname, which he's kind of grown out of now, and that was Whistler. He would uh, whistle when he yawned. To the point where I was afraid that he might end up with breathing problems. Thankfully, that didn't happen. He grew out of it pretty quickly. I still call him Whistler on occasion, but not very often because he doesn't really respond to it. Well, that's not very original. <laughs> Oh, deer. Doe, a deer, a female deer. <laughs> oh, memories of music class. And oh, how I wish I could actually sing. <laughs> so your dog is spoiled is what I'm hearing or reading as the case may be My mom had a Jack Russell Terrier, and his name was Trucker. Oh, I agree with you on that. And just so that anybody watching in the future, uh, Goggle Pop's comment is, people who don't spoil their dogs are the true animals. And, and that's definitely true, because if you don't love your dog enough to spoil your dog, or whatever your pet may be, but I'm a dog person, so I always think in terms of dog, uh, then you don't deserve one. And that's not an opinion. That is fact. Because every happy dog I've ever known had an owner that truly loved and spoiled it. That doesn't mean that the dog can't have discipline at the same time. Hey, Danny, how's things? I was actually going to do um, the, the crazy 16x map that came out today, but... Uh, it has bugs, lots and lots of bugs. So he's releasing another version. He says tomorrow, but I don't believe it. <laughs> it's Christmas tomorrow. Well, Merry Christmas, Danny. Thank you for stopping in, even if it's only for five seconds.
Yep, Goggle Pop. That's exactly it. I actually got mad at a guy um, the other day. Uh, well, to be fair, he... I, I think he was working on it using uh, the Giants editor. Okay, cool. Uh, I think he was working on it using the previous version of Giants editor, just like a lot of the map makers were doing. Not that he completely squeezed it out in a month. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. So I watch a truck driver on YouTube. His channel's called Trucking with Schmid. And he takes his German Shepherd with him. And never puts his German Shepherd on a leash. And somebody had the gall to tell him in a comment that he needs, and this was the attitude, he needs to put his dog on a leash. That's for the dog's safety, not yours. And had serious attitude about it. And I had to respond in my, my nicest jerk voice uh, of text and, and tell him off because, no, if your dog is properly trained they will stop for you when you tell them to no matter what they're doing it doesn't matter if they're chasing a deer whatever if you properly train that dog they will stop under any circumstances and schmidt's dog is very well trained so people telling him what he needs to do with his own dog that is so well trained can just shut up. <laughs> uh, although that does bring to mind a uh, story that a friend of mine who is a former sheriff's deputy told me about when his department was training a new canine they were training the dog at a school with a very very long hallway that they used to train the dog to run at and attack and take down a perpetrator um, but they also used it to train the dog to stop on command Yeah, Danny, I totally understand. Um, so they were training this dog. This Well, they were training three or four dogs. I, I don't remember how many, but this one particular dog wouldn't stop on command. So what they did, and this sounds a little bit cruel until you understand that the dog did not get hurt. It just got startled. They, they took, and they went over to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever at the time, and... Uh, bought a big old sheet of plexiglass that they put across the hallway and the dog wouldn't stop he hit the plexiglass that was the last time that he refused to stop on command after that that dog stopped every time that they told him that was all it took was one time of running into a clear wall <laughs> i got a kick out of that story it's like yep that's how you do it I actually still need to do some more training with Alexander because he's only partially trained in a few respects and he's also lost some of his good training that he had. When I went truck driving and I was gone all the time, he kind of regressed on his training a little bit and, and that's very unfortunate because now he's a little bit disobedient sometimes. So... I'm going to have to take some time off in the spring and spend some time outside with him and retrain him before he gets much older because he's already going to be two at the end of February. Uh, whoop, whoop. There's a bale in my way. I need vehicle control add-ons so that it uh, turns my head automatically. When I'm turning. Yeah. 
Yeah, Alexander's a good dog, and he's not stupid, but he is stubborn. <laughs> Just like his master, my girlfriend would say. <laughs> uh... And lately, even though he is fixed, lately he's been on a dominance kick again and been trying to be dominant with me. And I have a, a technique that I use with dogs to solve that problem. You lay down on the floor with them and hold them down gently, not mean. You hold them down and you have your face right in their face and you stare at them right in the eye. And you do that long enough and enough times, whatever it takes, and they will stop being dominant with you. They might still be dominant with others, but it's important for your dog to know who the boss is. And that's, that's part of my training routine. I actually... Uh, Learned that from somebody who raised sled dogs. That's what he would do with his lead dogs. <laughs> um, he, he would do that lay down with them and, and stare at them with his lead dogs. And that's he had some of the best trained lead dogs out there. It's funny because he, he would raise them here in Michigan, but almost all of them would go to Alaska or Canada um, for their careers because, well, <laughs> they have much more need for them than we do here in Michigan. <laughs> Sadly, that guy died. He was in a fatal car accident. I think one of his dogs died, too. Because he always had dogs with him in the car. Well, pickup truck, but... He always took at least one or two dogs with him to town. sad ending to that story and he was a really nice guy too yeah hmm can we say that I might have forgotten something here guys Still not going to make another bail, though, is it? <laughs> yep. Well, that'll do. gonna go forward a little more
It's funny, Danny, that you mentioned having a Malamute, because that's actually what made me think of that guy. Because obviously, Huskies and Malamutes are the dogs most commonly trained up as sled dogs. And, uh... He, he mostly did Huskies, which is why I love Huskies so much, and I would just totally love to own one. Um... But, uh, he had a couple of Malamutes over the years that I knew him. Glad there's some room in here by the fuel drum, because uh, we are now out of storage space. The end bay down there is for the tractor itself. I just don't feel like putting it away today. <laughs> Thirty-five hundred liters per bale, and it's going to take like four days to ferment. And I just realized that I didn't even check to see what the sale point was like for it. It's just this is all equipment I wanted to play with. So, well, the uh, mower that I used, and the the cedar that I have, and the plow that I have, they're all mods I wanted to play with. All right. Wow. Very nice. Silage dropping. Of course it is. <laughs> That's funny, Danny. That is funny. I've never known a husky that dumb. <laughs> Normally they're pretty smart. They are kind of silly though. They love to sleep outside in the snow in the middle of the coldest winters out there. You can definitely tell they were bred for that. Darn dogs. <laughs> All right, so we are actually at the low point for silage being here in August. So in January is when we should see it at its highest January, February time frame. Okay. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. But it does remind me. Um, where is the days per season at? Days per month. I never remember. I like to play with four. People call me weird, but that way... Each day represents a week.
<laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, Sir Alexander wiped out once last year. Um, he uh, came barreling in the house from outside. I think his feet might have been damp. But we have either hardwood or tile floor throughout the entire house. We don't have any carpet. So he barrels through the dining room because our back door is in the dining room. He barrels through the dining room, gets to the kitchen, tries to make a hard right to go through the little hallway where there's a bathroom doorway and then it gets to the living room. And uh, he makes that hard right except that he doesn't. He keeps going and goes head first into the side of the stove. Boom. <laughs> That was funny. He looked at the stove like it was the stove's fault. <laughs> oh, love my dog. Yeah, I died laughing. Do you think maybe I need a rear weight? Maybe. Just maybe. I think a uh, run to the store is in order. For now, we'll just slide these over here. One run to the store. Merging. Oh, that would be an awesome idea. As if having your beacon on extended your collision detection so that AI vehicles detected you from farther away. That would be the bomb. I have no idea why the fresh produce place is the store for equipment. But sure, let's go with that. I 
I don't have my weights in here that I normally would get. Well, booba. Um. Hmm. Maybe it's time to try something new. Let's see, that doesn't have a trailer hitch in it, and I like that. Is there a Zeter Red in here? No, of course not. We'll go with that. Close enough. Alrighty. <laughs> you got me, Danny. Merging means look out, I'm being a maniac. I think that Fent Red is a pretty good match to the Zeter. What do you get? What do you think? That's pretty doggone close. Fine, I'll look both ways. And now I'll go without looking back the first way, because there's never anybody coming here. Right after the blue car, we're going for it. We're going for it. Come on, blue car. Punch it. Punch it, my little Zeter. Yeah, it's not a bad little starting rig at all. And like Gogglepop was saying before you uh, joined the stream, it's uh, it's a very detailed tractor. Gogglepop said he thinks that uh, the Zeters might be the best detailed of all the base game tractors. I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't had time to look at them. But, uh, they are nice. Man, that's a lot of traffic. I haven't seen anything yet that compares to, uh... The uh, trucks by Expendables modding that RZ is using on his one game there. Um, I mean, dang, talk about beautiful. Really? You're going to play me like that, huh? Well, I know how to deal with butt-headed bales like you. I just start over. That's how I deal with you. <laughs> uh, 
um, those expendables trucks you can open the hood and they have all sorts of animation going on the fan and everything and they are very detailed I don't know if it's the same Expendables truck as I'm using or not. I know it's a Peterbilt. At least I think it's a Peterbilt. No, they don't infuriate me. I actually enjoy doing everything manually. Other than in multiplayer where other people insist on it, I don't use auto load. I take the time and load everything by hand, just like you would have to in the real world. Although the physics are still just a little wonky. They're way better than they were in 19. Whoa! Look at all the deer. Four of them. Five, because there's one way off on the left. If I back up more... Can you see it there in the trees? And they are just not afraid of me, are they? You just do it the next day, Danny. Come on, man. <laughs> or stay up. I need to fix my dead zone settings. Yep. I need to add one more click of uh, dead zone. I've got it at 2%. I need to make it 3. On my uh, side panel stick. It's wearing out a little bit because I do so many bales manually. there we go we've turned our yard into hay well into silage actually but you would have to in the real world or you'd have to turn your lights on and work at night there's no auto load in the real world and I like to play realistically. Right into being annoyed that this is fenced off. And I don't seem to have any way to get into it with equipment. And it's not set up for animals. But the deer are sure happy to run through it. Yeah. 
I think this was supposed to be for horses, but uh, wasn't set up. Oh well. Stuff happens. Cool. Well, that was a good day first day's work. We got five silage bales out of it. Uh, I don't know what kind of money we're gonna make off of these. I think we're going to have to hang on to them for a while before we can make any decent money off of them. Which means it's probably time for contracts. Well, that's why you got to make a YouTube series out of it. <laughs> um, like my survival roleplay. Which, now I'm wondering how that's doing. But... I'm not going to look. Not yet. Um, ooh. I like the, the new contracts menu where it separates it out by job type like this. That's nice. Oh, pardon me. Dad gummit, pardon me. Plowing field 40. For Zoe Scott. Great Scott! Yes, you do. Uh, speaking of, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna flog the horse again here. Um, on January 6th, I'm going to be doing my stream where I'm giving away a whole bunch of video game keys. Uh, there will be a minimum of five games given away and a maximum of 20, entirely dependent on how many people join the stream. So spread the word out to your friends and, uh, get them on there. Um, let me, uh, flip over real quick to my spreadsheet full of games. <laughs> so, here's some examples. Um, what happened there? My names are all gone on that one column. I'll have to fix that. Crap. Um, there's some Sonic games, uh, like Sonic the Hedgehog 4, uh, episodes 1 and 2 will be given away together. It's two separate keys. Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Um, I've got two copy... Two... Bleh. Hold on. Let me untie my tongue. Two copies of The Hunter Call of the Wild. And one copy will come with... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 DLCs. Um, that's like half or more of the DLCs. There's some Star Wars games like uh, Knights of the Re Old Republic 2, um, Battlefront 2, X-Wing. Let's see. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of games from Uplay. Uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, Assassin's Creed Rogue, The Crew, Far Cry 3 with one DLC, Tom Clancy Splinter Cell Blacklist, um, then there's some war games and shooting games and what have you, like uh, War Thunder, I have a campaign pack for that. Um, there's a couple of Batman games, there's a Mad Max game, Snipers, Ghost Warrior 2 and 3, lots of options. Uh, 
I've got two copies of Dirt Rally, two copies of Grid 2. Uh, I've got Grid Autosport. I've got Motorsport Manager, Toy Box Turbos, which is an interesting looking game. And then for Dirt 4, I have two DLCs. And then there's 91 of what I call oddballs, just games that I didn't put into any other category, either games that I don't know anything about or that don't fit any of the categories that I created. So, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I could potentially give away. Well, you can still win the key, though. Steam doesn't ever expire the keys. Some of the keys that I have, um, the games have actually been pulled from Steam at the request of the publisher. So you can no longer buy them. But if you already have a key, you can still redeem the key. So some of these keys are games that you can no longer get. Yes, that is quite a collection up for grabs. Now, to put that into context, um, looking at the spreadsheet, uh, what was the total? The total of games, this is not counting DLCs at all, uh, just games. Some of them have DLCs, most don't. 148. Now, to put that into context, I have 699 games in my Steam account. I said over 700 the other day, but I accidentally had the uh, tools category turned on as well. So it was showing me more than I actually have. But yes, I currently have 699 games. Which is just insane in my Steam account. I have 140 tools, 8 pieces of software, and 12 soundtracks. I'll be honest, I don't care about the soundtracks. They just came with bundles, usually. Um, so, I don't know yet which keys. The, uh, the ones that I have multiples of will definitely have at least one copy in the giveaway because, yeah. And I don't know yet whether I'm going to do one stream if I have to work or if I'm going to have the day off because it's my birthday and be able to do multiple streams. <laughs> oh, you're funny, Danny. So if we... Uh, hard me. Rather than doing a contract now... I think I'll end it here, and we can look at the contracts for next time. I think I'll do both fertilizing and this plowing, and probably this plowing as well. And I have to test the uh, multiple contract trick from, uh, from FS19 and see if it works on FS22 or not. But... Uh, for now, I think we will end the stream there because I am getting sleepy. It's after 10 o'clock. I need to start winding down. So I thank you all for hanging out with me and watching some Farming Simulator. And I will see you all on the next one.